Hello everybody, welcome to Air Power Live. My name is Eddie Rhodes, I'm an account manager for Air Power out of the Chattanooga branch. We're here in the Chattanooga branch to show you the new GEMA unit. This new unit is the OptiFlex Pro. There's subtle and yet big differences between it and the previous model, the OptiFlex 2. We're going to kind of highlight those for you today and then we'll come back and dig into the controller a little bit, but first I want to highlight just a little bit of the differences there for you, okay? So, one gun takes the same nozzle, but it's just a tad different. We have availability of a nice, easy Super Corona ring to attach into here. That makes higher film builds possible without back ionization. The other unit had that, but not as easily attachable. Okay. Our face of the unit pretty much the same for everybody who's had one of the older units pretty close to the same thing I want to turn it on not sure if you could hear that through my mic but those are digital valves that are in the background getting set to zero again they're zeroing themselves so that they're very accurate and you get repeatability out of the unit so every time you turn the unit off every time the unit comes back on the stepper motors or digital valves reset themselves back to zero okay that's what that noise is we've got several displays on the front not quite sure if you can see them but pretty much the same as the other one one of the unique features about this particular unit is that we have been able to or game has been able to break the 100 kV barrier we are now into 110 kV doesn't sound like much it just sounds like 10 kV well it's not it's 10,000 volts that's a lot people and it is tremendous of what it does for you and your shop to get more productivity out that's what it's all about more power it says that I can charge more powder particles and I can coat my parts faster and get down the line and put some money back in my pocket we're gonna show you how you're gonna do that in just a second other features about this this is now rigid that you can hang on to, but it also protects, should this fall over on the back, it protects the cables, the hoses, and everything from getting damaged should it fall over. So that's a great feature that there too. One of the other features about it is a stainless steel platform down here versus painted platform. It's aesthetics mostly, but it looks good, and it's gonna not wear off of the powder from the rubbing of the box onto a vibrating platform. So that's a little bit different. We have a new pump. This is the IG07 pump. This is unique in multiple ways. It's very, very, very user friendly now. It always has been, but it's even more user friendly now. It has a quick release under here that you pull up, pull your powder hose off, and your powder insert comes out of it. The powder insert has now a built-in injector inside of it. This allows you to, every time you replace the insert, for this pump to act as brand new again. The injectors in the past have been placed in the back of the pump. They get dirty, they get bent. You, when you're cleaning them, you get them distorted and they wallow out or cut into the insert and the powder makes a different path and it doesn't come out of here laminar like this will take it laminar. Laminar is good in powder flow. Smooth, steady powder flow. So this is new feature. The angle we already had and the quick disconnect is a new feature. Push that back in. The spring that's here that you see, just keep the hose from kinking. You hear that click? It clicks in. We push this back up. We don't kink the powder hose so that we get that laminar powder flow again and we don't distort it and we don't put back pressure against the pump and the powder surge out as it comes to your parts. That way you get even coverage on your parts. When you're spraying your parts, powder's coming out nice and smooth and even. So that's another feature about this. When we have the ability to, we run with a couple of presets. That was on the old unit. It's also on the new unit, so it's gonna be very familiar to your people. 
simple parts for flat, recessed part button for areas like Faraday cage and recesses down into deep draw parts and recoat. That's setting your voltages and your microamps for you at the appropriate settings. When we're in these modes, we cannot get to 110 kV. That's very important to note. So we have control of our powder outputs here or on the gun. We have control of our total air moving through the unit from the controller only. We have control of rinse air and we have control of fluidizing air. Those are all done through those digital valves we talked about, the stepper motors, so that you get precise control of that. Okay, very important to know. When we go into the power boost mode, we can either do that from the controller or we can do it from the gun. So if I'm painting an area on the part and I want maximum voltage and turn up my powder flow for maximum, I can do that from the gun or I can do it from the controller. We can set that into your recipes. We have 20 programmable recipes that you can set up the voltage, the powder outputs, the rinse airs, the fluidizing airs, all of that stuff can be programmed into the recipes and we have 20 of those. So for your parts, you take a picture of your part, you take a picture of your recipe and what the settings are and you hang them along the line or you provide them for the operator and that helps them to get back to those settings every time. You don't have to save it, it remembers those settings every time you go back to it. If you touch it, if you change it, it will remember those settings, okay? So, to get into the power boost mode, we, like I said, we can change it from the gun or from the controller. Here I have it set up as position number two or program number two, and you can see that it changes to 110 kV and 110 microamps. Typically, and you may have seen this in one of our other videos, your field uh, your corona field is out here like this. When you go into the 110 kV mode, the corona field is much bigger, so it allows you to charge more powder particles to get on there, right? The ability to produce more voltage, again, is a unique feature of this unit, and that's it. Nobody else can do this, so big, big, big leap in powder coating technology. There are a variety of nozzles for this, just like there were the other units. Once we get to that, we have the ability to bring in a higher level of coating performance for your shop. We're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna do a close up of the screen and we'll walk you through some of those modes. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back to talking about the features on the screen so that you guys can customize the settings for your particular parts at your shop, okay? So the top setting is powder output. I can go up to 100% or I can go down to nearly zero. Actually, I can go to zero. So those numbers are infinite for us. It allows us precise control of the amount of powder coming out to match the speed of your line or how fast you need to put powder on the parts on a batch system. This setting, wide open at 6.5, and you can turn it down to zero as well, gives us the total amount of air that's moving through the unit. Total amount of air moving through the unit has to do with also keeping the powder open in the hose instead of laying on the bottom of the hose. So it keeps it atomized in the hose and allows it to be conveyed. So this number, if it's too low, you have surging in the powder. So we bring that number up. When we bring that number up, it also increases this. This is a percentage, it's 39% of five meters cubed per hour coming through the unit. Typically people speak in CFM here in the States, so think of that as 5 CFM, and this is 39% of that 5 CFM. With that in mind, as this number decreases, this number is of a lesser value, so you would have to go up to make sure that you got the same amount of powder out. 
those settings also affect the velocity of the powder coming out of the hose and the gun and how it performs when it's going onto your part and or blowing by the part. So you have to be conscious of that. When we come into our select mode, we have rinse air with the small arrow that comes into the gun through the rinse air and it comes in around the electrode to keep the electrode clean. When we're utilizing a flat jet nozzle like you just saw, we want to have that low. We want to have that somewhere around 0.1, maybe 0.2. If I have too much rinse air, it blows the center out of your pattern and it increases the velocity. When we're in this mode, in the select mode, we have fluidizing air control. What is fluidizing air control? It helps to get your powder prepared to be conveyed out to the gun. So if you're in a hopper unit, then it's going to take more air to fluidize the hopper. If you're in a box unit like this unit is, it'll typically take a little less. So that's wherever it takes the powder to be adjusted properly, right? We don't know where that's going to be until we get into it. So that's adjustments there. The bottom number, 8, gives us our brightness on our screen. So if you're in a poorly lit area, you can see that. If you're in a well lit area, you can turn it up, right? So that's adjustable as well. When we get into our simple modes, this is for flat parts and it gives us 100 kV and 100 microamps. That is very good setting for most all your parts. If we have parts with a lot of recessed areas or Faraday cage areas, as we, as we discussed in other videos, then we push this button for complex. All of these numbers are adjustable here, this number, this number, and these numbers in the background when you push these buttons, right? They're all adjustable. This button is for recoat. Should you have already coated your parts, you push in that button and it gives you 100 kV and 10 microamps. And the lower microamps helps you to avoid back ionization and allows you to get the coating onto the part without having a lot of orange peel and rejects. So those simple modes there, 90% of what you're going to do will fit into those categories. You just need to adjust how much powder you want to come out and the total air that you want to come out of the, of the unit. So those are pretty simple settings. Once we go into the pre-programmed modes or presets, programs, however you want to call it, we can go 1 through 20. When we're in these settings down here, this does not apply. Only to when we get into the program mode do those apply. When we go into, for this unit, we have it set up. You can set it up different ways. I can control it from the gun here, or I can control it from the controller to get into my power boost mode, which gets us into the 110. So to show you that again, we'll go to program one, we'll change it to program two, and it shows us 110 kV, 110 microamps. That's the unique feature about this unit that no other unit has. We're having additional voltage to get additional powder charge to go faster, get your work done quickly. We get more powder on the part, which is what you're after. That mode, you cannot change anything. When it's in 110 kV, it's also in 110 microamps. You cannot change your voltages. You can change your powder and you can change your total air while you're in that mode, but that's it. You can also change your rinse air and your fluidizing, but you cannot change anything about your microamps. High voltage, high microamps, faster, flatter parts, speedy, speedy, speedy makes you money, right? So we can turn the vibrator on or off, however we want to do that. The unit off and on features, simple as can be, just like normal. And we have a Bluetooth feature now in this unit that allows you to communicate with your cell phone. You can change parameters from your cell phone, build your recipes, you can build 
a table so that when you're a job shop and you're trying to determine how much powder it's going to take to paint a part, there are settings in here and guidelines in here that you plug in the, the cost of the powder and it will measure how much your trigger time is and it'll tell you how much powder you sprayed out. For you bidding the job, that's what's important is how much powder came out of the gun, right? Because that's what you're getting, it's what you're going to charge these folks for is how much came out of the gun if you're not reclaiming it more specially, right? So this is something that we need to talk about in more detail, but it's going to take a little bit to show us on the, the screen on your phone and everything that this can do. But this Bluetooth is a wonderful feature. It's new to this unit and it'll help you make money in the long run. So if you have questions, give us a call at 1-800-334-1001 or airpower-usa.com. Get a hold of one of us, one of the people that comes out to see you, one of our application specialists, and your powder supplier. We can all be there at the same time. We'll help you pick out what's best for you. Please visit us at our social media sites, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, and we look forward to seeing you on the next film. Thank you.